Hi YouTube, welcome back to another video from WTFRC Cars. So, we got uh, a new gyro from AGFRC. Tiny little thing. And this one is a dual mode. So it's got a gyro mode and then an AVS mode, I think it's called. But this is the GY01V3. And it is fully controllable from either the potentiometer so it does come with a little screwdriver, so you can adjust it with the potentiometer. Or, like the other one, you've got your output to your servo, you've got the input from channel 1, and then you've also got the gain control. So, we're going to get this uh, fitted onto one, one of the RCs so I can show you what it actually does. Uh, then I'll show you how to control it off of either the MB4, the Pro, or any other radio gear. Basically, you just got to set up one channel, spare channel, to control this. I've got a um, screenshot of the instructions, so I'll quickly put that up. I'll put it across screen for you, so you can pause it and you've got the full instructions. And I'll just run through a few of the settings while we're doing that. Um, basically tells you that this one, it's got two different selectable gyro modes. Also got endpoint settings. It'll also work with the Futaba S Bus 2 protocol. Um, so if you are having problems with it twitching or anything like that, you can correct it. It's high voltage capable, so you can run it on 2S LiPos directly. So it can run 8.4 volt, or you can run it from your BEC if you can go up to 8.4 volt on your ESC or an external UBEC at 8.4 volt. So you can run quite high powered servos. It will operate all the way down to seven point, uh, sorry, 3.7 volt. It only weighs 10 grams, so nice and light. Uh, you've got your LED status on the actual uh, module itself. So red fast blinking is gyro initialization, so it's when it's powering up. Yellow fast is complete loss of signal. Solid green light tells you what mode it's in and tells you that the gain is being adjusted by channel 3. A slow flashing green light tells you what mode it's in and that you're adjusting it via the potentiometer. So if you if you are trying to run it from channel 3 and you're getting a slow flashing light, um, might be worth having a look at which way you've got the plug plugged into channel 3 because it's not getting a signal from it. Um, solid red light is AVS, uh, sorry, AVCS mode, and that's controlled by channel 3. A slow flashing red light means it's AVSC mode, but it's been adjusted by potentiometer. Uh, do -do -do, what else we got? So, yellow on for 3 seconds, uh, normal AVCS mode setting. Uh, yellow slow blinking 3 times. Forward and reverse gain setting and yellow slow blinking travel setting. So that's when you're going through your modes setting the um, gyro up. So your endpoint travel, uh, press the mode switch. Uh, so you've just got to tap it quickly. Yellow blink slowly, enters the steering of the remote control. Make sure the servo is at its stop, so central. And then turn left, turn right, and then press the mod switch, and it'll blink two times. Red LED becomes solid, green LED blinks slowly, meaning current travel has been saved. So quite easy to set your endpoints. Right, so receiver connection input signals. So 50 to 333 hertz, that'll work with pretty much any controller. Futaba S bus 2 suitable for Futaba's latest control when S bus 2 input signal is used default channel 3 for select sensitivity uh, and the gyro game wire is not used so if you set the steering output to S bus 2 so your channel 1 to S bus 2 you don't need to use the gain wire then to control your gain setting uh, Sandwar SSR SHR, suitable for Sandwar remote control when using SSR SHR signal input. 
the output signal is automatically adapted. So you won't lose performance just by using this gyro if you are using the SSR SHR modes. It'll just throughput the exact same high frequency signal. And then lastly, in the last picture, adjust the gain via channel on the transmitter. Default for S bus 2 input. Range is plus and minus 100%. Zero means no sensitivity at all, plus or minus 100 means maximum. So no matter which way that channel goes, you don't need to reverse it because zero is zero and 100 plus or minus is 100% gyro. So let's get this dropped into one of the uh, RCs and see how it performs. Right, so I'll put a picture up so you can see how we've got this connected. But basically... That's on full sensitivity. So you can see just how sensitive this gyro is on full. And all we've done is set it to 100% on channel 3. So if I now back this down. You see nothing whatsoever. Moving the RC doesn't make any difference at all. And then if we slowly start to wind this up, so that's around 20%, that's 40% and we're starting to get a little bit of steering, 50%, a little bit more, 70%, that's around 80 so you can see how quickly it's responding, and 100%. Now, what we need to do on this one, if you move the RC, it should turn into the turn, and not as this is doing, this is turning the opposite way. So, what we need to do on this is, let's back it down so it's not twitching all over, and you really want your gyro fastened to the RC when you're doing this. But, basically, you just press and hold the mode button and should hold it for four seconds and that should reverse the actual servo throw so now if I put it up to 100% you can see it turns into the actual turn So if we're steering, so if I'm going to turn right and then it, the back spins out, it's going to try and correct it. So that's the way around you want it steering. Right, let's have a look what other settings we've got. Signal right, so the next thing we're going to want to do is set the endpoints. So you press and hold the mode button. And power up your RC. The light will start flashing yellow. So we turn it all the way one, one direction until you want it to stop. Tap the mode button, it'll flash green. And then what you want to do is turn it all the way. I'll try and make sure I can see the end stop on this one. So you turn it all the way the other direction so you want it to stop at the end point tap the button it'll flash green and red and then it'll go back to its normal operating mode whichever mode you've got that setting and then your end point should be now back to how they set from your steering but your gyro now has its end point set so if we go up to 100%, you should now see the car react. So if the back end steps out, it will try and pull it back into correct operation. All right, let's see what else we've got on this one. Right, so this is just a basic run through video. You definitely need to make sure that this is fastened down properly. Um, cause 
they are really really sensitive and if I put this up to a hundred and I'm barely moving that so you can see just how sensitive it is so you really do want this attached firmly to the chassis else it's gonna not behave as you think it will but basically that is on normal gyro mode and as you can see probably better off doing it with the RC facing you but basically as you turn the gyro will catch the car as the back end steps in and out and it will try and cor correct the travel of the car so if the back steps out it will try and steer into it and as for what you have the gain set to completely up to you how much input you want how much you want it to counter steer so hopefully you find that useful um, we will be fitting this in an RC uh, it's probably going to find its way into the GT2 because uh, that's quite a uh, fun car to drive and I think a gyro especially being able to adjust on the fly will be really useful in that RC um, the other thing I will show you really quickly if you don't want to or if for whatever reason you don't have a third channel spare on your controller if you disconnect channel 3 and then power up the RC so rather than a solid light red or green you'll get a flashing light red or green and that then just means you adjust it with the potentiometer itself so I'll just quickly if I turn that up to 100% you'll see that is crazy sensitive and then if we back it back down you can have it all the way off or 50% and it just makes it less active but I think most people you're going to have one channel spare and you can set it to your remote so you can change it on the fly which is how I would suggest using a gyro but thanks a lot for watching WTFRC cars if you find this kind of video interesting or useful don't forget to share to friends and family don't forget to like don't forget to hit the notification bell and I'll catch you guys again in the next one